Again, welcome to Data Mining and Analytics Lecture Number Two. In this lecture, we're going to discuss about data mining and machine learning applications, such as cross storing, classification, predictive analysis, and association rules. And so, data cross storing is the process of grouping related data set items into one or more clusters, uh, which means similar data will be in one cluster. The similar data will be in two different clusters or different clusters. So one of this is one of the first tools that data analysis perform when he or she mines data is to again place the data into a related groups. So similar data set may be in one group together and data that are not similar will be in different groups. So process uses an, uh, what we call unsupervised machine learning algorithm, which means the algorithm does not use a training data set. A training data set is a data set that also have the class level or the target variable. Uh, what we mean by the target variable is that, uh, for example, I can build a model that can diagnose a patient and uh, this is A, whether it has a disease A or B. So the first thing I need is a training data set. This is a data set that we know the patients have the disease A. So maybe I may have 10,000 patients data set with the disease A. Then I'll use that with a learning algorithm to build a model. Then next I may use what we call the test data. Test data is the the data of the patient without the target or the class level. So we don't know if the patient have a disease A or not, we don't know. But it's up to the model, the learning model, to again make the decision for us. So a training set is a data set that also have the, the knowledge, the target variable uh, content, the value. So we say clustering is not, don't use a training data set. Uh, so the goal of clustering is to again group the data into clusters based on some similarity measurement. And most of the algorithms we are going to use the distance measurements. So data clustering algorithm also here we say that uh, most machine learning solution differ by performance, memory use, hardness or softness, data set size, the data set size is very important. That can lead us to what we call the overfitting or underfitting uh, problem. We may discuss that along the way. Also the need for analysis to specify the starting and number of clusters and also others. Again, we may get data into cluster algorithm and we may discuss all. So example given here is clustering the Aries data set. So here we say the Aries data set is a well-known data mining and machine learning data set used to introduce the clustering and classification process. So in Aries data set, we have some attributes. And uh, the attribute will be the SAPA length and the width and also pattern length and the width. Now, based on the sapper width and the length, and pattern width and the length, we can classify, again, based on those values, we can classify whether the flower is a Aris setosa, or is a Aris virginica, or is a Aris vesicola. So here, we can use the concept of cross-selling. Now, the data set that have similar uh, width and length, we have one cluster. Uh, the size are the same width and length, another one, again, will be in different clusters. Now, if we have the training set of our race data set, then we can use it also for classification, whereby we're going to build a model. And based on the model, we can. Next time when we have a data set, we can uh, make a decision whether it's one of these three classes. 
That's Aris Setusa, Aris Vajenica, and also Aris Vesicola. So we also use a cross story uh, by R or Python. We have the R package or Python library file for cross story algorithms. And this is an example here. It may, again, we may discuss this later on. Also, data classification, which is another uh, type of machine learning or data manual algorithm. This is two step process. First, we need a training set to build a model. Then after building the model, we need a test set to test the model. So as we said earlier, training set is a data set with the class label or the target variable. And the test set is used to measure the accuracy uh, of the model after we build it. So here we say data classification is the process of assigning data to machine groups. There are many different uses for data classification. Example here is a bank. So a bank, for example, might examine a customer's attribute to determine if the customer is a high or low risk, low candidate. Uh, so most of the laws that we apply in the bank, the decisions are not made by a person. The decisions are made by other data manual machine learning model system. Similarly, airport security teams might examine passenger data to determine if the passenger is a potential threat. This will be a classification. For example, we may have an image of, uh, let's say, a terrorist in our database system, immigration database system. So when the passengers arrive, they scan their passport or take them a picture. And this image will go to the classification, classification model to analyze to see if we can match the image with the image that is already in the database system used for the model. And also doctors might examine the tumor bowel speed to determine if the tumor is malignant or benign. So based on a, a model, we use the training set. And we know what is a tumor uh, uh, being malignant or benign. We know it. So we use that data set to build a model. Next, we may have a data from a, a patient, and now we want the model to determine based on the attribute if the patient's tumor is again malignant or benign. Another example security software might use classification to categorize an email messages, whether it's valid or spam. Now, this will be based on the subject of the email or the content of the email. So data classification uses, again, what we call the supervised machine learning, meaning that the classification algorithm will use the training data sets, data set to teach the algorithm the common attribute for each category. Now, there are many different data classification algorithms which differ by memory use and CPU performance. So classify an income greater or less than 50,000. This is an example again using Python. Here we import, import the pandas and numpy uh, packages to do an SK learn also SK, SK learn also. So you can see the, the code here. We are import, importing training test spread from sklearn.metrics. Again, we may go through Python packages in the future. We also have a predictive analytics. Here we say for decades, businesses have used data analytics to explain, explain their performance during previous, previous quarter or year. So analysis refer to search analysis as descriptive analysis. That's analysis use data to describe what happened in the past. Uh, so predictive analysis, in contrast, 
uses data to predict what will happen in the future. So classification uses the data to classify. Predictive analysis uses the data to predict what will happen in the future. So a linear regression will be a good example and very useful. Here we are using a linear regression with only one attribute. So our attribute is slope uh, by the slope, which is the x. And uh, so the s will be our independent variable that will determine the y. Y will be dependent variable. So here we see the simple form of predictive analysis in linear regression, which creates a linear expression that best model a given data set. In a simple linear regression analysis, predict a result based on the value of one variable, such as the value of y is using familiar equation. This is again straight line equation. So our independent variable will be x and s can determine y. Also, we have the multivariate regression. In this case, again, we have more than one x value. So here we have one, two, three, four. So we have four inputs to determine the output, which will be y dependent variable. So here we say in multivariate regression, analysis predict the result based on two or more variables. When you perform a multivariate regression, the solution will provide you with the coefficient values. In this case, for A, B, C, and D, which you can then use to predict results. So predict insurance costs, again, using Python. And the next will be the data association. Normally we use the term association rule. And the concept of association rule is that we may analyze the data set to find out if A influenced B. Or for example, a very simple example is the market basket analysis. For example, we may analyze the supermarket database system to see if customers buy bread, they also buy peanut butter. So what's the association between the two? Here we have to find, we have to have a treasure value and we have something called the confidence and support values. Those two confidence and support values can tell us if there's any strong association between bread and a peanut butter. So data association is the process of identifying relationships between two variables for which the presence or absence of a first variable called the antecedent influence the second variable called the consequent. So here we have the bread, antecedent, peanut butter will be the consequent. So one of the best known data association problems is the market basket analysis, which examine the items in a shopper's basket to identify association between them. Now using the market basket analysis, for example, analysis found that shoppers who purchase diapers are highly likely to also purchase beer. So this is again an example. Uh, we search product inside in an then a store might advise, advertise a sale on diapers while also increasing the price of a beer. Uh, same applied to uh, peanut butter and bread. Since we know that most customers buy both at the same time, we are not going to put those two items on sale if I'm a store manager. Maybe I may put bread on sale and then peanut butter, regular price or a little bit higher. So we also have a Python package that make it possible to, again, do data association task. And next is what is a big data mining and also analytics. So here we say across the internet, we can, again, accumulate data as much as large as large as possible. So yeah, across the internet, we are accumulating data at a exponential rate and expect, expect to double the amount of data in the world every two years. 
So with the advent of the internet of things, that's the IoT, that rate is expected to increase. And this is the concept of big data. I think we discussed about big data have four Vs. Uh, the volume, the data is very large. The variety, the variety means we have different types of data structures uh, coming from different sources. And also the velocity, the speed of generating the data very high also. So the question many analysis asks is, when does a lot of data become big data? So in the simplest sense, we say that an application becomes a big data application when we can no longer manipulate the data using traditional databases or data analytic tools, meaning the big data volume exceeds the size of the data tools that can support. For example, when we cannot analyze our data in the memory, we can also say it's a big data, in which means the big data is too large that it can fit in the memory. So we have to analyze the data from storage device. And also we may have different structure of the data, which make it impossible to save the data in a regular relational database. Maybe we have to use the norm, SQL concept or Hadoop concept map reduce. So this is where data science comes in. We deal with a large big data analytics and we have to use some other applications that will make the analysis possible. So in this course, again, we are going to do a hands-on data mining and analytics with Weka. Uh, we said Weka, I said, it's an open source software, it's free. And we can see the window here. So again, it's a graphical user interface. Uh, we don't need no coding. It has a lot of features, including visualization, data preparation, which we call the filtering. We filter the data. Then the major three tags, classification, cross-storing, and association also is included most of the algorithms are included. So these are some of the few key terms we should know. Uh, we should know what is a business intelligence. Um, again, the use of tools, data mining, machine learning, visualization to convert data into actionable business insights and recommendation. The next is the classification the process of assigning data to matching groups or categories. Also clustering, the process of grouping related data set item into one or more clusters. Dashboard, a visual and often interactive collection of charts and graphs that correspond to the metrics for the business key performance indicators. Data association, now that's the process of identifying relationship or association between variables. And we saw the well-known example is the market basket analysis. Here we are determining if a customer buy a product A, and what is the chance of buying product B, the association between product A and B. And we may talk about a prom algorithm, the concept of again support and confidence values to determine the relationship. Also data cleansing, data quality, data visualization, data wandering, and also descriptive analysis. And what is a machine learning? We went through the technology. Also the natural language process, we were talking about the test mining, uh, we, so natural language process is more or less like test mining, but again, it has its own uh, algorithms. And the concept is here is that the use of software to understand the written and spoken words. Uh, then we talk about predictive analysis and also prescriptive. Prescriptive analysis is within descriptive and also predictive analysis. This will rec recommend the best choice among available options. 
Uh, we talk about what is a supervised learning, what is a test data set. Uh, when we are doing classification, we need training data sets to build our model. Then we need a test data set to test our model. That's the training data set. Also unsupervised learning is when you are using a data, but it's not a training data set, mostly clustering. Custom algorithms are unsupervised learning. Then we also talk about what is a visual programming. It is the process of creating a program by dragging and dropping objects. Uh, good concept is the rapid manner and waker. We are not going to write the code, but rather again, small as a going. So here we say, as opposed to writing program language statements. Learning something like a rapid man or waker, and the learning curve is very, very good, very low. I mean, it takes a shorter time. If you understand the theory concept of data mining and you understand all the algorithms, then using waker for analysis or rapid manner uh, is very quick. You catch it very quick. Again, R and Python, it's like you are learning programming language. So if you don't have no background in those languages, it means you have to take your time. It, it will take time, the learning curve is high. So again, this will be the conclusion of our lecture number two. And so in this lecture again, we went through the basic concept. Uh, when I say basic, I mean again, we went through the definitions of the different machine learning and data manual algorithm, classification, cross storing, association, and we went through some of the major keywords in machine learning and data mining. So again, wish everybody the best and thank you.